Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie, and in this video, I'm going to uh, show you some practice questions for relational algebra for all the operations that we have learned so far. So let's begin. This is the database that we will be using for doing these practice questions. This database consists of um, four tables. The first table is called person. It contains columns name, age, and gender, where name is the primary key. The next table is frequent, which contains the name of a person and the pizzeria where the person is frequently going, which means pizzeria is a, uh, we all know is a restaurant that sells pizzas. So uh, this is the place where a person is frequently going if a person is frequently going to Domino's, then the entry of that person will be present in the frequency table with that person's name and the name of the pizzeria. Here, the primary key is formed by the combination of name and pizzeria. The next table is Eats. Uh, this shows you the name of the person and the pizza that is eaten by that person. And here the combination of name and pizza together forms a primary key. And then we have the serves table. The serves table will show which pizzeria is selling which type of pizza and at what price. So that is our serves table. It contains, uh, it has pizzeria and pizza as a primary key. So these are the four tables in our database. And these are the primary keys that are present in those four tables. Now, using these, we are going to do some practice questions in relational algebra. Uh, the thing is, before we begin, uh, in all the previous videos, I used tables that had actual data in them. In this, I'm not going to use such tables. And the reason for that is, if I use tables with data, then it actually occupies a lot of space. And in most exams, they do not give you tables with uh, data. They give you tables without data, just the name and the column names. And that's all you have to work with. So that's what we are also going to do. The first question is, find all pizzerias frequented by at least one person under the age of 18. Your first task should not be which operations to apply, but rather which tables to use. Most questions are about natural join, and most questions use more than one table. So it's best to first find out which tables are needed. So in this case, uh, it is saying find all pizzerias, which means I can use, uh, I have to use a table that contains the name of the pizzeria. And so that gives that, that can be done only from frequent and serves. I have two choices, frequency and serves. The second thing is uh, the age of the person is given, which is uh, less than 18. And if I want to use that, I have to use the person table. So let's say that I'm using the person table, which is fixed. Which other table can I use with the person table? Uh, like I said, I need pizzeria, which I can get from frequency or serves, but serves does not have any co column that is common with person. So you cannot take a natural join. Natural join can only be taken if um, both the tables have some column that is common. So in this case, I need to take uh, the second table, which is frequent. So I'm going to use the person table and the frequent table. Now, this is what my query will look like. I will be doing, first of all, from person, I will apply the sigma condition and find out all the rows where age is less than 18. Then I can take a natural join of that result with frequency. And from that result, I will uh, fetch the names of the pizzerias which I want. So this is how you can uh, solve this type of a query. Let's see the next one. The next query says, find the names of all females who eat either mushroom or pepperoni pizza or both. 
Now, or both is given as an out afterthought in, in the bracket. So it's not necessary. But um, when we say mushroom or pepperoni, it's understood that it could be both also. Now, what I want is the names of females. And from where can I get names of females? From the person table, because that is the only table that has the column gender. And if I want to find out the type of pizza, I would have to use uh, either the eats table or the serves table. And definitely I cannot use serves because there is nothing common between person and serves. So I have to use um, the eats table, not the serves table with person. And this is what the query will look like. So start reading from uh, inside. The first thing we are doing is taking a natural join between person and eats. After the natural join is taken, we will only get um, those rows of, uh, I mean, we will only get names of those people who are eating some pizza. So all those uh, people who are not eating any pizza will be eliminated. From there, we are going to fetch uh, these things. So we have written the query in this manner. We have written gender is equal to female because that's a condition. Then I have used the and condition and in bracket I have applied the or condition, which is that pizza can be either mushroom or it can be pepperoni. Most people here make the mistake of uh, doing uh, instead of or, they are putting and, um, but that would result in giving you nothing. When you are using pizza equal to mushroom and pizza equal to pepperoni, you are trying to say that um, you are looking for a row where uh, you have pizza, mushroom, as well as pepperoni, uh, you know, both at the same time, which is not possible. Uh, the row will either contain mushroom or pepperoni or something else, but it definitely cannot contain mushroom and pepperoni in one row at the same time. So that's why if you use and, it gives you uh, nothing. But if you use or, it is the correct way to do. From this, what I need to fetch is only names of these people. So I'm just going to write down by name. And once by name is done, then this is the query and you will get all the names of people, all the names of females who eat either mushroom or pepperoni pizza or both. Now, let us see another query. This is about finding names of all females who eat both mushroom and pepperoni pizza. Now, this is where most people would, uh, like I said before, would just rewrite the previous query and instead of pizza equal to mushroom, or pizza equal to pepperoni, we'll just put and. And the result of that will be definitely, as I said before, you will uh, simply get uh, nothing. You will get no, no rows because not, no row contains mushroom and pepperoni together. Now, once again, let's take a look at the previous query. This query can also be solved using union. It would be a little bit longer, but it can be done using union, wherein in the first query, you write only pizza equal to mushroom. And in the second, you can write pizza equal to pepperoni, keeping everything else the same and take a union between the two. So that would be an equivalent query. And that's the great thing about relational algebra. You can solve the same kind of question in multiple ways. Uh, but uh, as long as the result is the same, that answer is correct. Now, let's go back to the query that we were talking about, this one. So in this case, because we cannot do it like we did the previous query, we must use some set operation, which is intersection. So it will look like this. Uh, if I, uh, the first query is where I'm finding names of females who are eating mushroom pizza. So I'm taking a natural join between person and eats. From there, fetching those rows where gender is female and pizza is equal to mushroom. And from there, I'm fetching the column that is name of that person. And the second query is where I've written the same query again, but in, instead of mushroom, I've changed it to pepperoni. So it gives me names of females who eat pepperoni pizza. 
and then I'm taking an intersection between the two. So you can see there's an intersection between the two and this will give me names of females who eat mushroom as well as pepperoni pizza. Now let's move on to the next query. This is slightly difficult, but you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Here it says, find all pizzerias that serve at least one pizza that Amy eats for less than $10. So again, we have to figure out which tables to use. Notice that it only requires name of a person, which is Amy. And you can get the name of a person from person frequency eats. You can get from anywhere. But also the price of the pizza is given. And the price column is only present in the serves table. So we have to use um, the serves table, definitely. From the serves table, I cannot get name of a person. Also, I cannot know which person is eating which pizza. I can get that from eats table. So I have... Uh, uh, recognized, identified the tables that I require. They are serves and eats. And I can write my query in this manner. So first of all, from the serves table, I'm keeping only those rows where the price of the pizza is less than 10. And from the eats table, I'm keeping only those rows where the name of the person is any. And then I'm taking a natural join between those two. And whatever is the result from there, I will only pick the pizzeria column, which is what I want as a result. So this is how you can solve this type of a query. And this query, the next one, is about finding pizzerias that are frequented by only females or only males. Now you might want to do this query in a different way than what I'm going to do here. And if you are getting the same result, it is correct. If you would like me to check your query, then you can write the query in the comments and I'll check it and let you know if it is correct or not. I'm going to solve it in this manner. So I'm already showing you the answer because um, that's how you'll understand it better. It's quite big, but if you take a minute, uh, you'll get the hang of it. So in this case, we, are, we need to find all the pizzerias that are frequented by only females or only males. This means uh, if you pick a, pick a restaurant like uh, uh, Domino's, then you can add it to this result only if there are only females going there. Or the other cases, only males going there, but not both. So that is the condition here. So if I want to do that, then I need to write the query in this manner. Notice the first query. Let's just understand all four queries one by one, and then we can see all the operations that are being done. So in the first query, uh, we have, first of all, removed from person all the females. So we are doing sigma gender equal to female. So we are fetching all the females from person table. And then we are doing a natural join of that with frequence table. And after doing a natural join with frequence, from there, uh, what I want in the result is actually only name of a pizzeria. And so I, I, I need to do by pizzeria. That gives me only name of the pizzeria. Now I have replicated the same query uh, again, but this time I've written person uh, gender equal to male. So this gives me data of all the um, persons who are males. And then I'm taking natural join of that with frequency. What this gives me are all the pizzerias where males are going. Now understand that this is not giving me names of pizzerias where only males are going because it gives me names of pizzerias where males are going, but it does not ensure that females are not going there. So in order to do that, I have to perform minus. So I'm doing minus between these two queries, which means I'm fetching all the pizzerias where only females are going. Because from the female ones, I have subtracted the males, male ones. Now the same two queries, I'm also 
repeating down here. So when I'm repeating these two queries down here, I am once again writing the same thing, just interchanging. Uh, here I'm writing male and in the second one I'm writing female. So what this gives me uh, are all the uh, pizzerias where only males are going. And once I fetched that, the only thing that I need to do now is to take a union between the two. And with the union between the two, I will get uh, pizzerias where only females or only males are going. Uh, let's uh, try to understand this uh, once again, just, just a recap. So the first query fetches for me all the pizzerias where females are going. That does not mean that in those pizzerias, males are not going. But then from the first query, I'm subtracting the names of all the pizzerias where males are going. So using the first two queries and the subtraction, which is the set difference, I am ensuring that I get only those pizzerias where only females are going. Now the last two queries are where um, first I'm doing fetching all the pizzerias where males are going which of course does not ensure that females do not go there. So that's why I'm subtracting from there all the pizzerias where females are going. So these two queries and the set difference together will give me all the pizzerias where only males are going. So the first two queries give me pizzerias where only females are going and the second two will give me pizzerias where only males are going. If I take an intersection between these two, it will give me null because, um, because of the way the query is created. So I want to take a union because I need to find all pizzerias frequented by only females or only males. So I'm going to take a union between the two and that will result in all the pizzerias frequented by only females or only males. Now you can do this query in other ways also, but do not try to do something like gender equal to male and gender equal to female. If you do that, if you write that type of a query, you will once again um, end up into the same trouble as, uh, as it happened with the pizza, the pepperoni and mushroom. So you cannot do that. You cannot write a sigma condition with the uh, same column uh, with an AND operation in between. If you do that, it will always result in giving you no values at all. So this is how you can approach relational algebra questions in exam. Uh, no matter what questions they are, first try to figure out which tables are required. And once you've figured out which tables are required, then you can uh, decide which uh, operations you can apply. And remember that there is there are more there is more than one way of solving the same type of question. So your answer may be correct also, and you will be able to find if you think about it, you'll be able to find another way to solve this question also. So if if that is the case, then you can obviously write your answer in the comments, and I'll check it and let you know um, if it is correct or not. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.